Welcome to another episode of How It Works with Holger. Reading this title, you might think, Holger, we have T-Edit. Of course we have T-Edit. And T-Edit gives us all we need. We can enter strings, we can enter numbers, floating point figures, yes. But we, as the developer, have to make sure that the values that have been entered are actually the values that we wanted. The means to restrict the data input with T-Edit are pretty limited. Recently, Embarcadero introduced the numbers only property, so that gives us a little bit more control that only numbers can be entered, but still that doesn't allow us to do a validity check for floating point figures. In my testing with that property, I couldn't even enter a floating point figure because the dot was not allowed. So, looking farther into the VCL, we find, of course, mask edit. And mask edit gives us the ability to define a mask for which characters are supposed to be entered. And still, we have to do the work when we read those values. And that's key here. Let's look at this simple example just in front of us on the slide. It says this is the text input. And in order to access it, you use the text property but the text property is a string. If we had an integer number inside of the text, you would have to use string to int in order to get your integer value as a data type. And that makes things complicated because you need to check first if the user really entered a integer value, otherwise you will incur an exception or you might have to add exception handling and all sorts of stuff. And floating point values are only the start I just brainstormed for, let's say, about 10 minutes, and this is what I came up with. Here are the integer values, floating point values. You have measurements for length. You have temperatures. You have monetary values with currency attached. And all these have to be tied to the settings that the user has set. For example, in Europe, most likely you want to see euros in the United States, you want to see dollars. And then what I realized when spending a lot of time in the United States is that the dollar sign is actually a prefix to the number, whereas in Europe, the euro sign is a suffix. So all these differences, you can't do it with the standard T-Edit. And then dates and time, you don't have masks or standard mask for these in T-Edit, and you can say, hey, is this a valid time? Is this a valid date? Passwords, yes, you can do those with T-Edit by presenting a password character, okay, given, and then weights, kilograms, tons. Again, all these, like length and temperature, they're all having like a unit of measurement attached to them. And then, of course, you always sometimes when you enter values, especially for accounting purposes, you have a list of values and having a calculator open as a different application or even doing the calculation like a simple sum or something in Excel as, as like help in order to transfer the result into your Delphi application, it's not very comfortable. So it would be nice if the edit control actually offered that. For example, if you ever worked with a tool like QuickBooks, you can enter a plus sign and then a little tiny calculator comes up and then you can do your calculations and the resulting value goes into the edit control. And all of these are not really straightforward to do with T-Edit. You have to do a manual tinkering to get this data type to that data type. You have to make sure that the unit that you show in the edit control maybe gets extracted from the actual value. And all this is something that can be taken out of your hands and is encompassed in one simple control, the T-Advanced Edit Control, which is part of the VCL UI pack from TMS Software. This control is also the base for any of the edit controls that TMS offers. For example, the T-Edit Control also has a T-Button Edit Control, which allows you to place a button in your edit control. But without just explaining it in theory, let's show it. Here we have a fresh VCL Windows Forms application, and we'll filter for advanced edit. That's the control we're going to look at 
primarily today. And already as hinted, you have the T advanced edit, which is the base for everything. And we also have TDB advanced edit, which is the same as TDB edit. It just gives you all the great features that you have in T advanced edit. And as already mentioned, you have a special kind of edit control for units, like length, weight, and these kind of things. And you also have one with an edit button. Let me show you that one real quick because it's very visual. So if you click on the advanced edit button, here you see you have a button on the right. You can configure the button either with an image or icon, whatever you want, or just text. And you also have special events for these things. You can look at if you filter with button, you get the on click button event with which just refers to this tiny little button there. Okay, but let's focus on data types. So the standard edit control, I'm not gonna show you, you know how it works. I mean, you're a Delphi developer, and even if you start as a beginner, you have worked with the edit control. Let's just rename this to something simpler that we can access easier. Let's just do edit. This is the simplest, or TXT edit which gives us no binding to any data type in particular. It's just a text edit. That's why I named TXT edit. Of course, it should always refer to the value that's actually shown in there. But right now we're comparing different ones. So it doesn't make any sense really to pick a particular name. Good, TXT edit. And looking at the properties of the control, they might be a bit overwhelming at first, but with this video you have a good starting point which properties to focus on at first and then you can go from there looking at the documentation documentation is actually not as thick for this control um, it's actually quite to the point and will get you right where you want because it's also written in a way um, for particular use cases and also i have in hands-on one hands-on one i refer to i mean hands-on with Delphi, my book series. And in book one, I look at the T advanced edit button control for using it to open up a folder for selection and stuff like that. You might have a look there as well, but okay. Which properties to focus on? I'm getting beside myself again. Um, so the first one that's very, very important to note is you still have the regular text property nothing is going away if you just want to do some quick text entry just from now on if you use tms use t advanced edit don't use the standard edit don't do it just use this one because nothing is going to change the text property is still there and then the second one i would immediately focus on is the edit type and the edit type property just limits the values that can be entered into this edit control. So let's say you want float values. So you switch it to ET float. That's all you need to do. With this setting, the edit control automatically flips to a float representation. And if you run this, you're no longer able to enter any letters or anything else. But I also can enter a comma because here my system is set to the US standard how to do numbers. And in the US, a comma is a thousand separator, but the decimal point works. And I also have the limit to two digits right now. So I can't enter any more digits, but I can enter more in the front, but never more than two digits. That's limited. And that's the default setting, which gets you perfectly where you want to be. The nice thing is, and let me add a memo for this, or a simple label. With the label, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say name, uh, label, string value. That's gonna take the string value of what is shown above and to show you that all the text property that we had before is still available. So we can go to on change and in there we can say label 
string value dot caption. Our completion was getting ahead of itself. Label string value caption is txt edit dot text. That's always going to be there. So you always have what you had before. That's the main thing. So if you don't want to learn at first any new properties, so even if you have one, two, three, four, dot four, three, you still have the string value in the text property. But, and this is where it gets interesting. In addition to the standard text property, you have property for all the different data types. Of course, only if it is applicable for the editor that you set. You don't see those in the object inspector, I think. Let's see, let's search for int. No, you don't. But you see one that's called value. And there you see that you can also get the hex or set and get the hex value. Very interesting. But you don't see any data specific stuff. The only thing you see is maximum and minimum in this case. So not really helping us. But if you go to the code completion of the control, so you say txt edit dot and then type int, you see that we have int value, int 64, which is the 64 bit integer. And that's what you want, maybe. You know, in this case, we want a float. And guess what? We have a float value as a double. And that's exactly what you need. The control is doing all the work for you. Okay? So you don't need to um, think about like to convert these values or anything. You can be sure that you have a float value to work with. All the error handling, everything is done inside of the control. If you get to the advanced features of this control, you can even do validation, like you light it up in red if the value doesn't um, suffice or if the value doesn't fit to what you need. You can even do manual validation, like you call a web service or look up a value in your database. Everything is possible with this control. We're just setting the base here. There is so much more to explore, but the ability to just have the value in the data type that you need is so useful because you are no longer doing these float to uh, string to float, string to end. You need, don't need that anymore. All of that is inside of the control itself. So looking at this, if we wanted this float value here, and let's say we want to multiply that with some with pi or whatever, let's just take pi and want to set that to another edit control. So again, we take advanced edit because we don't know t edit anymore. We, we've completely forgotten about that one. Um, so advanced edit, I'm going to name that txt result. And this is the key thing to realize. You cannot only use these properties to read values that have been entered. No, you can also set it that way. So if you in your database have a float value or if in a file or somewhere, I don't know where, or if you do a calculation and it yields a float value, you can assign that directly to the edit control. And all the conversion, all the trunking, all the rounding, don't bother with it. It's done with the control. And you can also say maximum float value, minimum float value for user input. You can set the number of decimals. We're going to look at that. So. First of all, let's update our control with regards to the result of the calculation. So you can very well do txt result dot float value equals txt edit dot float value times pi. I think pi should work out of the box in Delphi. It does. Good. Let's run this. 2.6 and you see we get 2.6 and 8 yeah I can do that it, it sounds about right but why just 8 and not well look at this we forgot to set the uh, the editor 
So txt result should actually be a different kind of edit. So always edit type is set to string right now. So <laughs> kind of makes sense that it's getting rounded up. But here let's do float and then this should work. So 2.4 and there you go. Now you have the floating value with the number of decimals attached. Let's say you want more digits after the decimal point. Well, that's easy to do. The term you need to know is precision. And precision gives you the number of decimals. So let's say I want that to six for txt result. And the precision display can also be normal or shortest. Normal means I think that, uh, as you can see here, all the um, digits are being shown, filling them up with zero. And if you do shortest, I would think, yeah, everything is being, only what is not zero will be shown. So let's do it to PD normal and start it. And then if we say one, that's pi. That's two times pi, three. And of course we can also enter a float on the top. And we didn't do any conversion of data types. We just assigned the values to the edit control. And of course, Remember, we didn't mark this as read only or anything. Of course, we can make changes. You know, this is just setting this edit control, but nobody keeps us from, from making changes later on. Of course, um, read only is also available or enable this, all that is there. Now, so I really wasn't saying too much that I say all that T edit can do, this one can do as well. It definitely can. So let's look at a couple of more editors um, because I think that's pretty neat. Let's do a currency one. Let's see what's happening there if we want to edit a currency. So you know by now, name first, txt currency, and then we go to the editor, and that is the editor type property, and what do we have? We want to do currency. Um, back in the day, I think Delphi 2, Delphi 1, the term currency wasn't used as much. It actually was used money. I don't know why, but I clearly remember that there was some sort, especially being from Germany, that there was some kind of terminology change from money to currency. Um, so, this is the one that you want if you want to edit a currency. And what it does, all the settings are there for currencies. And you can see what happens is if you have more than a thousand, you automatically get a thousand separator. And negative numbers are also not possible by default. Or, and that's also interesting, no sense or anything. These are just full, um, full amounts. And of course, if we go to precision, we can say, okay, a one, two, and this is key. The component does not use anything from the window settings automatically because you might want to write your application dynamically. So you handle that yourself. We have, two things that are very important also for units and measurements. We have a prefix and we have a suffix. So let's say you have dollars, you would do dollar. And there you go, you have dollar zero zero zero. And let's start this. And if I have $1,024.34, that's it. That's how easy it is to do. You, and of course, I mean, I'm sure you believe me, but let's push this value in here again into txt result if there's a change here. So I'm gonna say on change txt result dot float value equals txt currency. I named it, I think, yes, float value reading the flow value, writing the flow value. Should be no problem whatsoever. 
can see 1024, 35 cents. And you see the settings that we set before with the number of uh, uh, digits, they're still there. And, and the thousand operator, uh, the thousand separator is also gone. So everything is specific to the edit control and you can work with the data types like float integer. You can also read this as an integer. You can like say, okay, I want just want the int value of the monetary value that I just entered. How much sense it makes, I don't know. See, all the digits are no longer relevant. Just be careful <laughs> because let's say this would still be fine. This, 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 but this would already be under certain circumstances, especially for accounting, you normally would round up. This doesn't round, this is just taking the integer part of the value that was being entered. So I'm quite sure I know Bruno for a long time now, and uh, I'm sure there's something in the properties somewhere that you can change the behavior of that. But in this case, what we're doing is we take the integer value and assign it to the float value here. You can also, even though you have your uh, edit control set to the option to do some digits and floating points, you can still just set the int value property. It'll handle just just fine um, if you stop the application first when you want to recompile it. And here we go. 24, 4, 5. You see, it just uses the floating part. What doesn't work and that should be pretty clear to you, um, float value, because then you return a double and try to assign it to an integer. That doesn't work, okay? Obviously, but I'm just pointing that out. Okay, so float value equals that float value. Also note that the prefix and the suffix are not part of the value. So no matter what you put in as a prefix, or as a suffix, you can concentrate on your values. And that makes this component so useful, you have no idea. Because all the thing that you had to do manually before, it's, it's just in there, you know? And looking at more of the editors, um, let's do one more. I could go on four hours with this control, I gotta be honest, you could do a whole day, um, a whole TMS day about the T-Advanced edit controls and their capabilities. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, so we do the edit type. So alphanumeric, pretty straightforward. You can enter letters, and numbers, but not any special characters. Float, we already looked at. Hexadecimal input allows you to enter a hexadecimal number. And the neat thing is you access int value, or float, but float doesn't really make sense, but it will work. Um, you would then get the real value of the hexadecimal string, more or less, that you entered into the edit control. And invalid chars, or cars, I should say, invalid cars, I, again, I'm from Germany. I have some things that I taught myself incorrectly while I was a kid. So invalid cars from characters, lowercase, everything you type in, is switched to lowercase. Mixed case means you can do only letters, but either uppercase or lowercase money we looked at. Numeric is the int. That means no floating point possible. It's just all numeric. Password gives you the password character. String, we also had uppercase. Very um, clear, every letter is being turned into its uppercase counterpart in case you enter lowercase um, and of course no numerical characters or special characters like dashes minus and stuff like that valid characters and incorrect char uh, and what's the other term they use invalid characters what's that about well we have if we look at the properties <laughs> we have two properties invalid characters and valid characters and de and depending on what you select, let's say valid characters are A, B, C, D, E, F. And then you set your edit type to 
valid characters only. This does not update, by the way. So if you assign something at runtime, that doesn't affect the editor in this case. So let's say H, J, K, L, nothing, A, A, B, C, D, E, F. Huh. That's interesting. So I set the valid characters. Let me check that again. Oh, that is something I love about Delphi 11, or they started doing that in Delphi 10, I think. And that's why I didn't cut it out of this video, because I'm quite sure you've been in this situation before. So you type something in the property and go away to a different screen. This is not being saved. You have to press enter. Now it's saved. And if I run this now, A, B, C, D, E, F, C, then it works. Also, the lowercase doesn't work. It's literally only these characters. It doesn't have to be letters. It can also be special characters. This gives you the opportunity to just filter for certain things that you want to be have entered. Um, if the standard um, editor types don't work out for you. So that is valid. And of course, you can go to the edit type and say, hey, you can't enter anything, but a e i enter it's wonderful and the lowercase works but the uppercase is ignored i can't enter it lowercase works uppercase doesn't so if you have if you know what is supposed to be entered you use the valid characters and if you no, hey, this is not supposed to be entered. Everything is fine, but this is, and then you use the invalid cars. So that those are very easy things to do, so you, to restrict user input. And if that doesn't suffice, I mean, I haven't even gotten into all the different, like, minimum, maximum. You can go into the properties here and say maximum, for example, so you can define a max value for floats value and also for the length and you think like where does this refer to the units i'm going to no no, no. remember this is all based on t edit because object oriented programming so t advanced edit inherits from the delphi component so max length actually refers to the length of the string so to speak you can still use that if you want if you have a zero in there nothing is being restricted if you have a max length in there for example in our example of what it's set to right now we have the invalid characters and um, if we say max length and we set that to five compile again a b c d e f and that's five and we can't enter anymore so even these properties still work as you would expect them to work. So those are maximum, you have the same with minimum. You have precision, which allows you to set the number of digits. You also have the thousand separator, auto thousand separator that the commerce, or if you're in Europe, it's gonna be periods and comma for decimal are automatically being inserted. All of these things are included in the control. And let's see what else we have. We also have complicated stuff. I'm not gonna go into that for null values. Very, very good to have. And let's see, we have the empty text. Wonderful. <laughs> if you have an iPhone or anything from Apple, what they do is they usually do not have labels, which is the final big part of this, how it works the edit controls don't have labels instead they have like please enter enter your name and then this is with a light grayish color as long as it's empty and as soon as you enter something let me switch this back to et string so we don't have any restrictions on there and here please enter your name and as soon as it gets focus the text disappears. Very, very nice. 
um, if you have a big form and sometimes you just have too many labels and uh, then you can do uh, address for example as a label and then all the different fields and inside for the empty text you put like street city state and all these things wonderful and um, the empty text focus like if it uh, stays when focus you can set the text style if you don't like the default behavior the error properties are supposed to be used for validation um, we have, I'm quite sure we have a video on our YouTube feed about the validation. Um, look on the um, TMS YouTube channel for validate or validation. There should be something in there. Um, flat, these are all things that have to do with the, with the style of the control and the styling, what, what it looks like. Not so much uh, what I want to focus on now, the help hint. This is the big block I want to finish with. Because I think the ability to have a label, right, attached to your edit control is essential nowadays. Yes, I know that Delphi has the labeled edit by now, yes. And I think you are also able to um, choose the position you weren't able to do in the beginning, I think, but uh, I think that is possible. You have, yeah, here it is, the position above, below, left, and right. That's what you can do. This is this is a standard library, Delphi VCL. Everybody has it, it has Delphi. You also have the spacing, how far the label is pushed away from, from the edit control. So pretty good start. And you also have the, I think you can set the format for the label. Let's see, label, edit label, there it is. That's the property. You, you actually get a full blown label control embedded in the edit control. That's the implementation that Embarcadero chose. TMS does it a little bit differently they don't have a full-blown label control attached to it. Instead, they give you the label caption. So um, full name, that's it. And you see the default right here. It's left um, top, I think. Yeah, left top. So the first placement is where it goes, left, top, bottom, right. And oh, I hope this video is mirrored of some sort. And then you have, for example, left bottom, then it's still on the left, but moving to the bottom of the edit control. So it's pretty nice. Let's me just adjust. And this is something you will have to do if you change your form font, um, because I changed my form to have a bigger font and uh, you will have to do the same with your labels like this 12 and style is bold. And I usually, when I put it on the left, I do left center like this. And from the extent of this list, you see that uh, TM has, has significantly more positioning options than the standard control. Um, I think the standard control is fine. Don't get me wrong with the, where you can position it. But I actually appreciate the fact that I can do um, left center or left bottom and tie. I actually appreciate that because that gives me more style options. And top center, top, where does it go? And then where it's center. And what I usually do is top left. That's what I usually use. Um, I know a lot of people don't, but that's my favorite. And remember just the label itself is not clickable at design time. You have to click on the edit control. That's your entry point. And of course you can say, hey, we want to, you can focus the label. The label is always enabled. Um, and the style you can, as I just did, make it bold and stuff. You, you have full control over that. The margin, same thing. If I set this to 15, it's 15 higher. The margin is 
automatically always adapting to where you position it. If I position it on the right top, the margin is here. If I position it on the left top, the margin is here. Okay, so that is um, very important to know that this margin is adaptive to the position. So let's do top left again. So this gives you a lot of flexibility to guide the user. Of course, you can also use ampersands and that will focus your edit control. All of that is in there. You can also make the label transparent. Very, very important if you work with styling, and background colors and stuff like that. That's all possible. So the label attached to the edit control, I actually prefer it this way. I don't need any of the other label properties and that's why I appreciate how TMS built it that it's always showing the text fully you know you don't get any cut off text if you mess up the properties of the embedded label that you have to deal with with the labeled edit so this is for the labels and let me just go through the properties um, you can also have you also have lookup autocomplete, these kind of things, built into the standard T advanced edit. So just believe me, if you have this control, use it from now on, even if you don't use all the features at first, at some point you will, and you can extend your applications easier if the customer wants these. You know, if you have an edit which um, asks for street, and then at some point you have a web service where you can do some geo lookup, you know, FNC maps, hello, you know, um, then you can use this for autocomplete in your VCL applications to guide the user, you know, offer things that are available to enter, you know, for autocompletion and stuff. So these things are all there. And of course, a big one, part of all the VCL UI controls, or I shouldn't say all, of course, but most of them, the persistence property, which allow you to store the value of this edit control either in an INI file or in the registry easily. I'm not as big of a fan of these because I'd rather have my data model separate and not use my form as a data model. But if you want to do something really quick, this gets you there quickly. Precision, we've talked about a prefix, pre, before, suffix after here is the range stuff that you can enter oh now i got it the range editor is actually like from 5 to 10 you enter the range you don't enter a value that is inside of a range that is what min and max is for you actually enter the range itself um, and this is what the range editor type gives you these are all from the VCL more or less, except return is tab, very helpful. <laughs> I would say it's one of the most asked questions in the forums. How can I make sure that I can jump to the next edit control pressing enter instead of, uh, instead of tab? This is it, switch this to true. Oh, we'll just do it here. Let's see, it's all, when we do return is tab, set it to true. And now we just have to believe me that i'm not pressing tab so tab is this and now i'm pressing enter same thing okay and of course when i do enter in the labeled edit i have to do tab but here enter works so kind of good example the only standard control doesn't have this ability so that is included out of the box for all the edit controls and return as tab where was i so many properties so return as tab was a lesson show error is the one if you use validation then errors are shown inside of the control with a red color and of course configurable and show url that means urls are actually recognized as urls and you can click them signed very important for numerical values if you want a plus sign or minus sign in there and here's the suffix for things that have to be added 
at the end. And you have tooltip capability for the tooltip framework that uh, TMS includes with VCL UI pack. Uh, transparent, of course, styling support, and here's our valid characters. So that's it for the properties. And even though this video is getting longer and longer, let's look at the events. And because there are a couple of events that I just think are really, really noteworthy and will help you a lot because right the ones on top, you have events for a clipboard interaction. If some, what do you want to do if somebody pays something from the clipboard? Hmm? If you, for example, what do you want to do after or on clipboard can paste. Let's look at the paste. If you don't want somebody to paste from the clipboard, you simply over implement this event and set allow to false. You can even look at the value <laughs> and uh, if you to, to, to react depending on what the value is. So that is really, really cool. Um, on clipboard and you can react to copy and cut what is supposed to happen you know so there's all these things that are not available the standard controls on change of course on click all the same thing you can't react to somebody clicking or double clicking on the label that's and then here the lookup functionality um, neat data is actually what I just tried hinted at like Lookup needs data. Oh, let's look up what is entered right now at a web service or in the database and let's supply the possible completions. And then only, oh, that's it. And more here, what happens if the URL gets clicked. So you can either do a shell execute there or even do something else because it could be a URL you want to intercept. You know, that might be something you want to do instead, instead of opening the web browser. And on value validate, once again, if you want to validate your values um, with some kind of logic, this is the point where you would implement that to then set the error state or hey, everything's Mickey Mouse. Okay, pop-up menu, tooltip, those are all standard ones. Whew. So that was T advanced edit, and I don't want to use the standard phrase in a nutshell. No, this was how it works with Hogger for T advanced edit. And hopefully I've shown you that this control is really worth looking into. And as always with TMS, there are smaller component packages that contain T advanced edit. You don't have to buy their um, biggest package in order to just make use of this. This is very VCL specific. This is the control that makes user edit really really easy it saves you a ton of work each time just think about it each edit control that you have to ask for a number or dollar amount you have to do some kind of value conversion whenever you assign an integer value from a database to your edit control you do some transfer of data values and that is no longer necessary so i hope you enjoyed this Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the feed to get notified about stuff that's new. If you're interested in remote one-on-one -on -one contracting using Zoom or whatever technology I'm available, just email me holger at flixengineering.com. I'll be there for you. We'll find an appointment and make it happen, I'm sure. And also have a look at my books. There's the hands-on book series which does something like this on hundreds of pages to give you very simple examples all the examples are reproducible and you'll start with simple vcl stuff and in the end book three you'll have a multi-tiered database application with a web front end with a web service and database backend everything is covered in those books and also if you are so brave look at tms web core there is a book and also the course by Wagner Landgraf, our TMS business expert. So you're in pretty good hands. And of course, there will be more from how it works with Hogger in the future. Stay tuned.